stand up. Bunga. How's it going, fellow Vanger? It's Eden for Carfight Calgary, and welcome to a new deck profile. We are going to be looking over Mega Colony's brand new deck. We are going to be looking at Gridora. Uh, Gridora is a deck that I've honestly been so excited for, and I've been waiting to be able to play it ever since they announced that Dark Face was getting more definitive support. And Gridora is honestly just such a great deck. It's so fun, and it's also something that like Mega Colony can potentially now compete. I really like the build that I've been working with. This is what I've been currently testing. So um, I, I also think can, I'm considering bringing this to Springfest. So if anyone has any opinions about how the deck should, well, how, how, any tech ideas for the deck, anything really, uh, I would really appreciate down in the comments. But let's take a dive and look at what I have for the list. So our starter here, we'll be using the brand new starter from the set, uh, Outstanding Mutant Promularva. Promularva. So essentially this is like a Peter the Ghosty clone um, where it's not uh, G restricted and allows you to draw a card early on. And um, yeah, it's also at the start of ride phase. So it's very nice uh, if you like, it gives you a chance of drawing your grade two before you ride. Uh, I tend to use this card right away because I don't see any other reason why you shouldn't use this right away. But um, yeah, it's a really good card. Um, the fact that it rests all your opponent's units is kind of redundant. Uh, maybe if you're playing a second copy of it, I can understand why you would use it, but more often than not, I'm using it the moment I hit grade 2, or about to hit grade 2, because uh, if you go first, it's really great, and uh, yeah, that's my starter, I think it's one of the better starters for Gridara anyway. Uh, next, we're playing three copies of the Dark Face Crit, um, very pretty, typical, plus 5k and a draw on attack when your Vanguard attacks, uh, we're playing four copies of the brand new Machining. Uh, critical trigger that is not machining restricted, which is so awesome. Uh, so this thing's called Machining Tree Hopper Generation Break One Act. You will return it to the deck, and if you return it to the deck, you can prevent your one unit on your opponent's side of the field from standing. That's pretty awesome, pretty free. Sure, it's that GB one, but that's I think that's the reason why this thing is not self clan restricted. But other than that, it is very good. Uh, this next trigger is one that I've been testing. It is three copies of Makeup Widow, the stand trigger. Um, so for those guys who don't know, she has the dark, she's from the last time, I believe, that Dark Face got any form of support. So this is a stand trigger with Dark Device, Generation Break 1, and at the end of the turn, um, you may pay the cost may, by putting her into soul, and you may counter charge one, and you can prevent one of your opponent's grade, one or the lower cards from standing next turn. So I've been testing the stand trigger mostly for the counter charge, and, uh, you know, mostly for the counter charge, and it's been working pretty well for me. Stands are also pretty nice in uh, this build, considering we do have some cards in the deck that are inherently 16k. So, you know, it's not terrible, not a bad card. I've been testing it, it's been working for me, so, yeah. Uh, next, I'll play two draw triggers in the form of Inga Chaffer. Uh, he's a Margal clone, so he goes into soul, gives something plus 3k. Uh, I've been really liking this too. Uh, draw triggers at twos are nice. Um, like, Although you technically don't really need the draw trigger, it's just a nice defensive option because even with Overwhelm, you don't want to be drawing from this skill quite a lot. And uh, you also don't want to be drawing five cards every turn. So uh, more often, on average, typically you're, you're going to be drawing like two to three if your opponent doesn't decide to play around you. So uh, yeah, we're playing only two copies of this. And then of course for the last trigger, Four obligatory heals in the form of the brand new machining snowing. So this is like every other heal trigger in the in the the latest effect heal triggers, where you banish this and or remove from play one of this and another heal, and uh, you can choose to either counter charge or soul charge. Um, Sometimes the soul is some, somewhat important, but there are a lot of cards in the deck that go into soul, so more often than not you're going to be using this for your counter charge. So that's pretty good, and yeah. That's the trigger line. <clears throat> One of the good ones. Uh, the Sentinel that we are running is the brand new Sentinel from the set, which is uh, Adherence Mutant Black Weevil. So this is a brand new perfect guard. Uh, it's following the same mechanic as all the other new PGs that have been coming out, where you banish this and another Sentinel in the drop zone. And his particular skill is that you can choose, you draw a card and you can choose to counter charge or soul charge. 
And this thing can only protect dark face units, so either your vanguard or your rear guard. So, uh, rear guard dark face, I should say. Uh, it's a pretty decent PG. I've been using it f for the uh, fact that you can protect, or it's a fact that you can use its skills and act. Um, and yeah, overall, it's just, you know, nice. It also just makes it makes it feel like you're not wasting a PG with the counter charge PGs. So uh, you could choose to play the old counter charge PG if you want. I feel. But in the end, I think this is on honestly a lot better because you get a draw out of it. So yeah, we're playing for those Sentinels. Uh, next, we're playing Fierce Rifle for Dark Face. Uh, pretty unexplanatory why you need to run it. I'm on both of the arts, in case you couldn't tell, because I'm uh, I like artwork. Uh, next, we're playing three copies of what is this called? Flow Mutant Twilight Matter. Uh, basically he is the dark device version of Jeffrey from Gold Paladin. Uh, when he boosts and he, there's dark device, if you have a grade 4 vanguard with dark face in its name, uh, this gets plus DK, and at the end of the battle, you draw a card, push it to the soul. And, yeah, it's pretty, I really like this. Uh, there are people saying that, or people that have been using the other, uh, card that draws, which is uh, the 6k ladybug that soul boss one on dark device if there are three rested units. I personally think this is a lot better because it's a 10k booster and it also exits the board, um, which can be helpful in some matches such as like Link Joker, um, what is it? Uh, <laughs> Link Joker, Dominate, all those other stuff. Like I think I just honestly think this is the nice thing, uh, nicer card, and it's also a tanky booster. So uh, when you need it to be, so it's very nice. Uh, next, I'm teching in two copies of Vulcan Levierte. Uh, essentially, um, so his, his main role is to prevent your opponent from entering something, but he also has the nice dark device ability where at the beginning of your main phase you may put him to solo counter charge one. So it's nice that way. Uh, more often, you're using it just to prevent. Uh, things from intercepting and it also tends to stick around because you can't choose it for card effects I believe that's how it's worded. Yeah it cannot be chosen for opponent's card effects as long as your vanguard has dark face in its name uh, and its card name so yeah pretty snazzy and then for the last the great ones we are taking in two copies of Brilliant Blister now a lot th th there's so much restand there's so many restanding vanguards in this meta like and plus one of the main meta decks is a predominantly restanding vanguard aka Overlord. And with the new stuff coming out like Victor and um, what's, what else is there? There's Dark Dark Irregulars with Blur Mouse, uh, Aqua Force Valeos, or Blue Wave I should say, uh, if anyone decides to play that. What else is prevent, like, the, the restanding Vanguards is pretty dominant so having access to preventing your opponent from restanding their Vanguard is kind of huge. So it wastes a lot of the resources in order for them to use it. So like this hurts Victor Plasma plays, this hurts um, Ace plays. It's overall just very good and I think this is a good card to have in the deck. And plus since again with Overwhelm you'd be drawing quite a bit so having this in hand is not impossible to think of. So yeah. So that's a good one lineup. On the grade twos. We're playing for the brand new 10k body, which is Light Horn Mutant Dangerous Hora. That's his name. So he's like those other 10k units that have been popping up where you have to reveal a specific name. In this case, it's Dark Face. And, uh, or else it gets minus 5k for the turn. And his ability is on the rear guard if you have a green for Vang or a Dark Face. And uh, if the number of opponents rested uh, standing rear guards is one or less, this gets plus 6k, which is not a hard thing to consider. So, um, if you're gonna, if you're trying to try to avoid playing this thing, or playing around this thing, you're just stopping 6k, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, as long as one or less cards are standing, this thing becomes a 16k attacker, uh, on your turn, uh, when it attacks, so, yeah, not much to say about that. <laughs> We're playing three copies of Punish Stake. So this thing grants the original Dark Face Stride ability onto a unit when it's played on Dark Device. So I, so just how it's worded exactly is um, Dark Device, when this unit's placed in a rear guard of a Vanguard with Dark Face has its card name, this unit gets plus 2k. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards and until the end of the opponent's turn, it gets at the end of the turn and this unit is rested, your opponent draws a card. And that unit cannot stand your opponent's next stand phase. So essentially it's another way of preventing a card from rest uh, from standing and it nets you a card at the end of your opponent's turn when you start up. So it's pretty good. I we're playing two copies of Black Spear Mutant Bulg Wasp. Now a lot of people have been saying this is not a great card. 
Uh, I just think it's okay. I could be playing something else. I'm still testing it around. Uh, but essentially on place, a dark device, this thing gets plus 7k. So it's not terrible, but um, I like it. it. It works out for me. Uh, I could be cutting it for something else, though I've been feeling like it's not the greatest card in the world. But uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm playing. And then for the last of the great tiers, I'm playing two copies of Vulgar Blister. Now, I've been testing this. Uh, I actually had the original Bold Wasp before, but I feel like I might be bumping this up to four. Uh, just because I think it's so great, although I hate the idea of being of riding into it. But basically, what this does is that if this is in the front row, all your opponent's rearguards in the same column as this cannot stand, you're in the opponent's stand phase. And then you can also use this for the cost of stride by retiring it on the field. So I think it's a pretty good um, distraction card. Uh, I'm actually considering cutting it to or dropping or bumping it to four and cutting Bull Wasp entirely. That's just what I'm, you know, been seeing because Bull Wasp is kind of useless. Other than you turn your play it, but at least with this, it's a threat to your opponent. And the 7k doesn't really matter all that much, especially when we have the, um, what's it called? The 10k booster with, uh, Mad Hopper or whatever it's called. Um, yeah, it also burns your opponent's column from standing, so that's gonna be annoying, and your opponent's gonna gun it down. And also, it's also, uh, free stride, so, uh, I'm considering it. <laughs> I might bump it up to four, so we'll see how it goes, but I think I might. But right now it's been okay for me, but uh, yeah, I might bump it up to four just because it's utility is there, I guess. Alright, on to the great threes. So we're just going to start off right away with our girl, Evil Governor Darkface Grodora, uh, the mother of all Mega Colony apparently. She has a really great ability. Um, her once per turn, uh, the Vanguard, kind of also wanted to see this place in the Vanguard over your unit strides, we pay the cost. If we do, you prevent opponents from calling onto one column on their board, which is pretty pretty annoying and pretty great. And she also has another ability, Vanguard GP1, so plus one at the beginning of your right phase. And we pay the cost. If you do, your opponent turns a card from their damage load face down, and you get to counter charge one. So she absorbs counter blast, which is very nice. And just overall great card. She makes the deck work, and it's just great overall. Oh, we're playing two copies. Next up is Intimidating Mutant King, Dark Face Alicidus, or at least that's how I think you say it. Uh, he has a pretty good skill. Kind of a soul blast one. One of these units plays in Vanguard or Rearguard. We play the cost and we do choose an opponent's column and paralyze all the units in that column. Uh, that's pretty good. And he also has a GB2 Vanguard Rearguard continuous. Uh, GB2 um, Dark device during the battle of this unit attacks the Vanguard gets plus 10k, and your opponent cannot intercept when he attacks. So that's very nice. He's a 21 swing, and your opponent has to guard from hand. Uh, they can't use their interceptors. So it stops like Gurguit, which is nice. I'm pretty sure Gurguit makes everything intercept, if I recall. Or does it move? I don't remember. But uh, yeah, it's pretty good, pretty good card. Although it does suck writing into him, because he doesn't do anything on stride. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> not much to say about uh, Dark Face there. And for the last of the Great Threes, I'm playing two copies of Violent Vesper. I really like this card in the deck. Uh, basically, he's a 9k Great Three, and he's play if when he's placed on Vanguard or Rearguard, you may t uh, Superior call the top card of your deck if it is a Mega Colony card. So, yeah, it's it's just the one. It's just a plus one when you play it. Um, of course, you would hate to ride into it, but that's why you have six other okay targets to ride. Uh, of course you want to bring Gridora as much as you can. Uh, Bulg Wasp is, or, no, sorry, not Bulg Wasp. Um, the Violent Vesper has been a good card to me. I really like it. Oh, and then people have been saying, like, oh, it doesn't really help in the, uh, Dominate matchup. But it's okay, I guess. Um, you can call over Violent Vesper if your opponent decides to call, uh, make you call it from the drop zone. Although I don't see why they would. Why would they make you do that other than to mill you one card, but... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a mandatory call too. Yeah, you have to reveal the top card, so there you go. Um, I don't know what else to say, it's a, that the Wild Vesper is a pretty good plus. So there you go. <laughs> oh, good is still here. Alright, on to the G zone. Now, I will say I'm missing one card, but we'll talk about it when we get there. So for the first of the strides, we are playing three copies of what's this? Poison Sickle Mutant Deity Overwhelm. Basically, the one card that makes a dark, well, dark device okay, makes Gridara okay. 
and it's also heck expensive. $100 per card. Oh, what the heck is this? Uh, so her ability is act once return card almost one and you may flip any unit in your G's on face up and for every resty card on your opponent's side of your field uh, rest rear guards, I should say uh, you get to draw a card and if the number of rested rear guards is one or less this unit gets plus one drive and a crit until the end of the turn and then she has a ge continuous generation break three ability uh, dark device all your units will get plus 2k for every face down card in your opponent's damage zone so as the game progresses, she just becomes she buffs up your field, and uh, she just enables you to do so much. She lets you draw cards, although you shouldn't be drawing with her every time. Oh, that's the habit that I fall into, which is bad. It's tempting when your opponent's field is full to draw the five cards, but unless you know drawing five cards will win you the game, I recommend you don't do it as often as you do. Um, so yeah. Uh, Overwhelm. <laughs> $100 card. Crazy. Uh, next template, I have two copies of Optorandus. I want to play three because Optorandus is so good right now. It just basically his skills act counterblast 2, GB2, uh, and discard a card from your hand, and your opponent cannot call anything to their side of the board, uh, and they call it superior calling. So the one thing about Optorandus versus Gridora is that Gridora doesn't stop your opponent from calling during your turn, meaning if they have a G Guardian that allows them to superior call, um, it just, yeah, it just, uh, it's only during their turn. So, I'm pretty sure that's how it's worded. Um, and then Opterandus is prevent superior calling, because it's in the, uh, oh yeah, it's in the card text of this, that they prevent superior calling, Gridora does not, so, I think that's the ruling for it. I know there's something about uh, up uh call is great. Uh, call prevention is greater than Gridora's, but I do want to play three. I have one coming in the mail, so that's annoying. <laughs> but um, yeah, up Tyrannus is pretty great. Um, the next stride, I have four copies right now. One of them is going to become an up but four copies of Merciless Deity Mutant Dark Face. Uh, his skill is act. Once returned, dark device, kind of us one, and flip up a unit in your G-Zone. Choose up to number of cards on your opponent's side as a number of face up dark dark, dark face in your G-Zone. Until they turn, they get this unit kind of intercept. They cannot be chosen by your card effects and costs. And for each card chosen, this unit gets plus 5k. Now, I've encountered some people telling me that they, I should not be playing this card. I honestly don't know, like, people have been... I don't know. I don't know why I wouldn't run this because uh, I, I don't see any other card that's worth playing besides this because this is a good flip target for uh, Overwhelm. It's also kind of useful in some matchups like uh, uh, like Bermuda Triangle, I guess. Uh, and basically anything to like, oh, um, Tachikazu is a good example too because then they can't uh, retire things for their G Guardians and stuff. And, uh, and that's also they can't engorge. So it's just very useful in some matchups. So I don't understand what you could be playing instead of Dark Face. Um, you guys can like let me know. Uh, because I think this is a good card to play. Although I do, I am going to drop one for an up to Randus once it comes in the mail. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, if any of you guys could explain what I could be playing instead, I would greatly appreciate it. So, there we go. The next card, I'm playing one copy of the GB8. I've actually managed to pull this off and win a few times with it, so it's pretty awesome. Uh, his name is Suppression Mutant Deity Tarantus. His ability is GBA. All your opponent's vanguards and rearguards lose their auto skills and cannot intercept. And all, your, and all your units get 5k for every rested opponent's vanguards and rearguards. So essentially for every card that's rested on your opponent's side of the field, your, your field gets really big. And they cannot use their auto skills. Um, you can still G-guard with auto skills. So there's that. But they, and they also cannot intercept so your opponent's forced to guard from hand. And or use some shenanigans, whatnot, from their damage zone from their G Guardians. So there's that. Very good card. Nice way to end the game with big numbers, especially if your opponent decides to call for it. And with Overwhelm, um, it's not that difficult to get GB8. Yeah. <laughs> and with G Guardian as well. And for the last of the strides, of course, we're playing one copy of Zoa, Zeroth Dragon of Death Garden, Zoa, Ultimate Stride, Counter Blast 2. 
Uh, you get to draw a card and superior coral card, and that unit gets maximum power, quintet 9. And if it hits your opponent, they just lose. Nothing much else to say about Zoa. The most difficult thing about this card, of course, is timing it and knowing when you get to use it. But Zoa is one of those cards that can just steal the game if your opponent is not prepared for it or anything like that. So Zoa is pretty great. I really like Zoa. Uh, although it is one of the lower tier Xeroth Dragons. Just on based on skill alone. On the Jigarians, we're playing one copy of uh, Rulish Lady. 7 star mutant deity relish lady uh, basically gives your opponent an ultimatum uh, you pay the cost of uh, generation or guardian flipping one card and um, when it's placed in guardian circle if your and, and your opponent's vanguard is attacking they have the option of resting two units if two units did not rest um, you get to draw a card counter charge and soul charge one um, and it's a choice for them to rest and you can also force them not if they rested in your entire boat already, you can just use it for the free shield and draw a card and get some resources back. Um, we only play one copy of it, of course, just because uh, there's no point in playing more than two, especially since it doesn't gain power. This is more so of an ultimatum, forcing your opponent to make a bad decision, like if they were going to damage deny you or something when their vanguard attacks, so there's that. Um, yeah, next we're playing one copy of Mutant Deity Fortification Grice Fort. Uh, basically it's the same condition when your unit, when this, so it's skill is kind of us one when this unit's placed in the guardian circle. Uh, during the battle that your vanguard was attacked by opponent's vanguard, you pay the cost and you may rest all the units in the back row. And this unit gets plus five shield for every two cards resting. I believe that's the wording. Yes, that's correct. Um, pretty good card, Denial Griffin of sorts. If your opponent decides to attack your vanguard with their vanguard when their laurel is still standing, <laughs> then they just cry. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good card. Um, other than that, it doesn't really do much. So, uh, if you rest three cards in the back row in the vanguard, so that's plus 20k. So this thing can become a 35k shield, uh, depending on circumstances. Alright, next we're playing two copies of this G Guardian uh Feather Wall Mutant Deity Morphosian. Basically, if there are less than two cards standing, this unit gets plus 10k shield. This is like kind of an easier plot maker, but it's essentially a plot maker for uh, Mega Colony. <laughs> I keep saying Dark Face, it's, it's just the same Mega Colony. So it's a pretty good card. And uh, yeah, this is a simple plus 10k shield if your opponent has less than two cards standing. So that's good. And for the last year, we're playing Dismal. Now, Dismal's in the deck now because we are playing the 7k Grey 2 because it is a attack target. And it's just something that I play just to... Either if I need to guarantee my next stride or if I um, if my opponent decides to attack it with a really big number, I just deny them that luxury. Or if they decide to attack my Vanguard and that thing is on the board, I can just use this as a G Guardian to prevent them from attacking it, especially if they use their weaker number last. So that's something to consider with Dismal. I'm playing it in a one, and I think it's pretty good. So that's that profile, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, please, I am still trying to figure out the best possible way of playing this deck. I would love any form of advice you guys could give me for um, Dark Ghidorah here. Uh, so far, my testing's been working out great. Um, a lot of the times, it's just I've been fixing people that makes that know this deck well, I guess, and um, it's just been avoiding me. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to counterplay the counterplay and stuff like that. I'm doing doing a lot of testing with Gridora. Um I am considering bumping up that grade two to four. I'm gonna be testing that out. Uh, hopefully I can record a CFA Adventures with this because um, first of all, I've been really wanting to play CFA for you guys again and it's just been having a lot of technical difficulties lately um i need <laughs> a lot of it is because i don't make um i use laptops to record all my stuff and i need to invest in a computer um i also my microphone is currently not working properly the way i wanted to which sucks but um yeah enough about my personal problems that doesn't matter to you guys at least i don't think so but that's the deck profile guys i hope you guys enjoyed it be sure to like comment subscribe hit the bell if you want instant notification of whenever i upload a video and share this with someone who you think would enjoy it and as always my fellow bangers be sure to stand up to the occasion and i'll see you all in the next video i make so until next time gotta say bye bye